Okay. Uh, the alarm set. Okay. Alarm. Thank you very much. Okay. We have a low pressure alarm and a high pressure alarm. A low pressure alarm means that it becomes disconnected. This needle would not move that high. Let's see, watch what happens. He pops off. Now let's say one or two is game off, right? And she start alarm. And let's say low pressure alarm. But once it's restored, The alarm, you have a latch alarm, so you can reset it. The other, the other alarm, okay, let me show you that. Up top here, yeah, low pressure and high pressure. I said the low pressure at 10. You, you know, you're nice for, for a fact. You, you ever been in a hospital where the peep is like five and they got the, the 10 people is 6 to 5. And they got the uh, low pressure alarm at 4. Mm. They were never low pressure because it's always going to go to 4 because of the peak. Unless, of course, you know, it's all connected. It's connected all together. But I like to leave the uh, low pressure higher than the peak. Okay, so the low pressure is at 10. So if this needle doesn't go past 10, it's all along low pressure. I set the high pressure, I got it at 75. Here it's at 60. Here it's at 60. Okay, we set it at 60 then. Okay, now it's high pressure. Oh, that's why. This lens is not this stiff. Okay. Because it's going to high pressure, it's going to be the 60 and all on. So you still want to high pressure, that's why the light is still flicking. Let me turn it back to 75 for the moment so you won't have all the alarms. So we're going to turn this to 60 when he's on, okay? Yep. So low pressure 10, high pressure is uh, going to be 60. Now, as far as connections, okay. We have a tubing, and we have a pressure line tubing and a um, insulation valve to it. And you're going to see an indicator over here. One end goes to here, the other end goes to the machine. This is the airway pressure, which is the degree tubing. And when a new tubing comes, it has a fat end, it won't fit on there, so you have to cut it with a scissor and then place that on. So that's the low, that's the um, exhalation valve tubing. It's here. Now how that works, when the air comes out of the machine, it also comes out of this little exhalation valve. It pushes out on this exhalation valve. When it pushes that, it blocks the air from escaping, so all the air goes to him. Simple. It took me a long time to respiratory school, wasn't it? Wait a minute, back to the story. Now, you got one tube that's going into here. It's going into the exhale. Sorry, I'm going to go back. Let's say the patient didn't have humidification. This tube will go straight into the machine, okay? And this will go straight to the patient. But because the patient is straight, he's bypass his own uh, humidification, his own heat, you know. So we have to simulate that with a, uh, it's called a heated humidifier. So what happens is, on the bottom of this here, it's like a hot water plate. And that's connected to it's an electrical, electrical cord connected to the wall and on the side here is a switch that you push this here and this green light will come on here which indicates that it's heat, heat. now in the front you got a thermostat you got one to nine now i think you wanted you wanted it very hot right so we got it up to like seven to eight maybe eight okay The air is going to come out the machine. We'll go through this bacterial filter. This bacterial filter is 
by the manufacturers that are, you know, rules that say, well, every month, take them out for a more. But every week, you look at them, they're dirty, you either just throw them out and replace it. But then this attachment here, it's a special light adapter, which will attach to an oxygen concentrator or oxygen source. Here would be piped in oxygen, and the home would be a concentrator which you plug in the wall. Mm -hmm. Okay. And this tubing goes from here to this jaw. It's called a humidifier jaw. At the other end of the humidifier jaw is a tubing that goes to the patient. So the theory, the air gets filtered through here, receives the oxygen, goes into this humidifier chamber, is humidified, is heated up, and it comes to the patient moist and warm. And you're going to get some condensation, you know, like, like rain, like rain out. Okay. That usually occurs because the temperature inside the tubing is, is moist and warm, and outside is cold. So when cold hits hot, uh, yeah, this will happen. When cold hits hot, you get a rain out, you get precipitation. So we have a water trap here, which entraps some of that water humidification. So we just hit like this here, and we can squeeze it, and drain it in here, and then we empty it out of it over time. That's to prevent the water from It makes the patient feel, feel very uncomfortable. And if these exhalation valves get wet, they will get stuck, and it won't you know, do its purpose, and he'll be losing air, okay? So, that's uh, the basic thing about the humidifier. In the home, the humidifier, we just take the water, we take the water and place it here, and that's it. And every week, well, twice a week, we take the jar off, and we, um, exchange it, and every day we empty out the water for new water. So twice a week you would exchange it, exchange your job, to your humidifier job. And um, once a week we change the whole tubing, the whole tubing we change once a week. That's, huh? that's how he always did it, because they don't, they don't get to change the circuits as much here, but he's well, used to changing home. them at home weekly. Yeah. Yep. I want to change every week because. No, no, that's how he usually does it. Oh, that, uh, okay. Because water, water hollows bacteria. You, you, 